let's look at a tough question and figure out how to solve it. And this question is, suppose we have non-zero constants a and b and we define a function f by setting f of x equal to a x e to the b x. Where does f have a relative extremum and what, time, and what type of relative extremum is it? So the first thing we better do is calculate the derivative. So we'll use the product rule and chain rule appropriately to arrive at this formula, which we can simplify by factoring out a, um, an a and an e to the bx. So we're gonna get this formula right here, a e to the bx times bx plus one. Now, what we need is to first find the critical numbers. So this formula is defined for all values of x. So the only way we can get a critical number is if the derivative has zero for a value. And there's really only one way to get that. A is a constant, e to the bx is always positive. So the only way we can get zero out of this deal is if x is negative one over b. That's our only critical number. So this function is going to have one critical number and it doesn't matter what values a and b have as long as they're non-zero. So we want, to, we want to analyze the sign of f prime of x. Now this looks like a very complicated affair. So what we want to do is crystallize the ideas we need to get to the, to the quickest and, and most efficient analysis of the sign as possible. And by the way, our analysis obviously has to depend somehow on whether a or b are positive or negative. There are four choices here, so surely our answer depends on whether A and B are positive or negative, and that's gonna come out in the wash. So let's sort this out. One observation is E to the BX is always positive. So for the purposes of analyzing the sign, we might as well ignore it. We might as well analyze the sign of A times BX plus one. Now that's a lot easier to deal with. The E to the BX is always gonna be positive, and if we only care about the sign, it's much easier to deal with this. The other observation is A is constant. So no matter what value of x you have, that a is either going to behave like a positive constant or a negative constant, and that suggests we should break up our analysis into two cases. Either a is positive, in which case we'd just be looking at the sign of bx plus 1, or a is negative, and we'd be looking at the sign of opposite of bx plus 1. So instead of analyzing the sign of a times bx plus 1, we might as well analyze just the sign of bx plus one and opposite of bx plus one. And this analysis will break into two cases, whether or not a is greater than or less than zero. Okay, now we ask ourselves, what does the graph of y equals bx plus one look like? Well, if b is a constant, that's pretty easy. This is a linear function. It's just, you know, five x plus one, negative three x plus one. So if b is greater than zero, this is going to have an upward slope. And so our graph will look something like that. And we've already taken the trouble of figuring out where it crosses the x-axis. We know it crosses at negative one over b. So there's our quick sketch of the graph y equals bx plus one. Now, if b is less than one, then the slope's obviously negative, so we're gonna have to flip the graph, but it's still gonna have the same zero. Now there's this right-hand column where we've assumed a is less than zero, in which case we're actually interested in the sign of the opposite of bx plus one. Well, the graph in these cases are obviously gonna be flipped across the, the uh, horizontal axis of the, of the picture on the left. So there's our graph of the opposite of bx plus one. And once again, they still have the same zeros. All of these linear functions have negative one over b as the sole root. All right. The sign analysis now of this function is pretty easy. Here we can tell we're going from negative values of bx plus one to positive values of bx plus one. And the analysis for the other linear functions are much the same. And there's our analysis of the sign of bx plus one or opposite of bx plus one. Now, what have we done? We've, we've actually analyzed the sign of f prime of x itself. This sign analysis actually gives you the sign analysis of f prime of x. All that work we did distilling out the simpler piece tells us this is our analysis of f prime of x. So what's going on here? These two cases, in these two cases, the derivative goes from being negative to positive, which means the critical number at negative one over b is there is a relative minimum occurring at, those, at that point. And you'll notice the gold box is either A and B are both positive or A or B are both negative. So that's the case where A and B have the same sign. And the other case is here, 
in orange where you go, the derivative goes from being positive to negative. What's going on at negative one over b in these cases? These are relative <laughs> maxima. That is our analysis of the problem. We've, we've completely decomposed this problem. We can say with confidence that if a and b have the same sign, then there is a relative minimum at negative one over b. If a and b have opposite signs, then there's a relative maximum at negative one over b. So there's our answer. And you should be pretty confident that this works. We broke what seemed to be a very complicated question into a sequence of much simpler questions. And by reassembling all those results, we get this sign analysis of f prime of x. Now, you should still probably take a few random values of a and b, plot this function on your graphing calculator, and really verify that you get a relative min or max as appropriate at the argument negative one over b. Get some graphical evidence just to make sure that we didn't make a mistake along the way. And either way, you're gonna find a mistake and it's worth going back and figure out what the mistake was, or you're just gonna bolster your understanding by verifying what you did graphically.